I am Trucker Ray. Welcome to my channel. If you're viewing for the very first time, I share my experiences driving the highways of North America, and I love to share the gospel of Yeshua, and I love to share the reality of trucking, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, without all the profanities. So if you have younger ones that really enjoy trucking, feel free to invite them with you on the couch. You will not hear any inappropriate language here, or cussing, or inappropriate content. I promise you that. All right, let's give you a rundown. I brought a load in from Vancouver to Calgary yesterday, and um, I'm supposed to be taking a, a, a load out of Lamb Weston, which is down in Tabor, I believe it is, uh, which is going to Texas. But last night when I dropped my trailer at the Walmart distribution center, I noticed that there was a smell of coolant, and I noticed my levels are down. And I even got a bit of a warning when I was going over uh, Rogers Pass. I'm like, ah, oh, you gotta be kidding. So I topped it up last night and then this morning, it's down again. So I'm at a repair shop right now. <clears throat> and uh, hopefully they can, uh, maybe it's just something that needs to be tightened up or a hose that needs to be replaced. Hopefully it's quick, because I really don't want to lose my load to Texas. I don't quite, I don't really know if I'm going to be able to do this Texas load because the water pump's gone on the truck. They are trying to figure out if this guy over here can fix it within a couple hours, but that's, I still think that's going to be too tight. He's got an oil change to do right now. So we're looking at least three hours before I can even leave Calgary. And Just let us know when you're done. Yeah, that's all we can do. Okay. So what will they do? Sorry? Uh, well, are they, can they change the appointment or will they have to give that to someone else? Because uh, the reason why I'm telling you, because the, uh, the deployment time is three days and that's including today. That doesn't give us much time. All right, so I'm, yeah, I'm not sure what they'll, what they'll do. We need, to let, uh, we need to know when you're up, uh, for up, up out of the shop so we're fixed. Okay, can you pass the message on to Noel though? Cause, because this sure. apparently this load I'm supposed to be taking is very time sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we if we can switch it up, we will. I don't think there's a, very many trucks available right now, so. Okay. Well, maybe they can switch the appointment to the next day. That would work. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right, we'll let you know, and then let us know your ET when you pick it up. Uh, absolutely. I'll, I'll let you know what's going on here. I'll send you some messages on the uh, satellite. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Thanks, yeah. Bye. Jeff's a nice guy. He, uh, I remember him back when I was working for uh, H&R. He's been with the company a long time. All right, so all we can do now is wait for, uh, wait to hear back from uh, from maintenance to find out whether or not they're going to make me wait until Freightliner is up and running on the week. I don't know if they're even going for the weekend. Or, or it'll be a Monday thing. I really don't know. But you know what? These sort of things happen. And I am just grateful <clears throat> that it happened here. And not when I'm down in Texas somewhere. And I get an overheat and the pump goes. And that would have been just nasty. So I'm very, very grateful to the Lord that this happened here where I haven't even gone on duty yet. Um, I am still haven't hooked up to trailers or anything this morning. I just noticed the coolant was low and let's get it looked at and sure enough, it's the pump. So um, I don't mind the delay. I'd rather get it fixed now and fix it later, stranded in the middle of nowhere. <laughs>
As some of you know, I had an opportunity to uh, take a few days off, or three or four or five days, whatever it was, I can't remember, it just went so fast. And uh, went over to Vancouver Island, to Campbell River, which is a uh, really beautiful spot along uh, Vancouver Island there, along the, uh, the east side of Vancouver Island. Uh, just beautiful beaches, beautiful lakes, and the hotel that we had was overlooking a really nice little river there. It was really nice, and I had a chance to spend time with my granddaughters, Autumn and Abby, and it was it was a lot of fun. Those those little girls are growing up so fast, and um, it was just really nice to spend time with them. And so what we did is that we rented a hotel for three nights and we took one of them one at a time, one night and the other one the next night so we could spend one-on-one -on -one time with them and it was fun. And then of course later on we, we, we had opportunity to spend time with both of them and uh, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that and uh, yeah, the time just went so fast. Just went so fast. But yeah, I think it was like two and a half months since uh, the last time I was at home. My Jeep started up with no problem. <laughs> I was really, really impressed with that. <coughs> so, uh, we're back at it again. I don't know how much longer, how long we're gonna be on the road this time, but uh, maybe a month. I don't know if I wanna do two and a half months. That's a little long. Doing a month at a time and going home for a couple of days, I think it would be adequate, so. But anyway, in the meantime, we just kind of have to wait out things here and see when we're actually going to be leaving or if uh, we'll end up taking that load or not to uh, Texas or not. We'll see what happens here. Hopefully everything goes smooth. one thing those guys at power stroke over there uh, sunny man I, I cannot believe you got that thing done that fast if I would have went to first truck Freightliner Wow that could have taken hours I may not even be in a shop right now if I would have taken it there this guy had the part at the shop or he had it ordered got it all done fast just super nice guy the guys, uh, his mechanics there, they're really nice too. Just amazing. I'm really glad that uh, iHaul has those guys working on um, our, our trucks because they just, they don't waste any time, they get it done. I'm really, really happy with the result. I didn't expect to be driving today. I thought I'd be sitting. So they replaced the water pump, they topped everything up, they actually fixed a marker light too that was out on the top, which is important because it's always good to have all your lights working. Now uh, you don't want to give the scale any reason to pull you in. <laughs> they could pull you in for just a light. I think I've had that happen before. Uh, do you know that light is out? Uh, yeah. And then you have to put it on your pre-trip and all that, yeah. I noticed the light was out a couple days ago, but uh, I didn't expect to get it done that soon. So anyway, I'm happy. Happy as a clam that I got this done. So I'm gonna let my dispatch know um, what's going on and uh, see if they still want me to take this load to Texas. All right. 
right, I have my empty trailer that I am taking down to Tabor to exchange for a full trailer. <laughs> yeah, I asked dispatch if they still wanted me to take the load and they do. I guess they're short of trucks out in the Calgary area. And I said, okay, I'm willing to do it, but you might have to change the appointment time. So I am to give an ETA once my loaded trailer is hooked up and just before I leave and uh, give them my ETA. And I actually had uh, someone send me a message and I forgive me if I didn't respond to it on the actual YouTube channel, but I want you guys to know that I, I read all the comments, I do. I just don't have time to answer all of them and sometimes I don't answer them at all and the reason why I do that is because I kind of feel bad if one person leaves a message and I'm able to respond to that and then the next person uh, I don't have time for it and it just looks like I'm not answering some people and answering some and picking favorites whatever and that's not anything I like to do. So what I am going to end up doing, <laughs> if I add any more segments to the uh, weekly productions, uh, they're going to be about three hours long, but I'm going to try to add another segment where I read, uh, read off the comments from the last previous video. And uh, that way you guys know that I'm definitely reading them and that I can also answer them at the same time. I just don't have time to, answer, to go in there and, and reply to all of them. Um, but someone did ask me, <coughs> excuse me, how do I schedule, how do I know how to schedule my ETA to where I'm going? And uh, what I do is I will not use Google Earth or Maps to determine my ETA and how long it's going to take me to get to where I'm going because the mistake with that, if you do that, the Google Maps automatically assumes that you can do all the posted speed limits along that route 80 85 70 whatever it is your truck might be governed a lot lower so google is telling you that's how fast it is for a car to get there doesn't look at your truck so what i do or doesn't acknowledge your truck or any trucks which is kind of sad you think that google would have that considering that's what runs north america is trucks <laughs> But anyway, so what I do is my trucker GPS, I have a Garmin, um, I think it's a 760 or a 780 diesel or diesel, whatever they want to call it. This one here, you can plan, or should I say, you can actually tell it that, hey, I can only do 55 miles an hour, I can only do 60 miles an hour, and then it pretty well programs what your route's going to be for that speed and that gives me a much more accurate uh, idea of how long it's going to take me to get a point a to point b so even though i can do 69 70 miles an hour i still say that i can only do say maybe 60 miles an hour i can't remember how i have a program that way i'm always gaining time so once I have it all figured out, say it's 26 hours to get to where I'm going. Well, I like to give myself 10 hours every day for driving and one hour spare of wiggle time in case I need that extra hour. If I can go a little bit longer, great, but I normally go 10. So right there, that's telling me if it's 26 hours, that means it's gonna take me two and a half days to get to where I'm going and I can pretty well give a very accurate uh, time when I can be there. So that's how I plan it. I just kind of divide it. Wow, this is a confusing light. Look at that. You're staring at a red while you're going through. That's for left, Ray. <laughs> you think they would have that in the turning lane? Yeah, anyway. I wonder how many people stop at that. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've driven through here and that still confuses me. So, anywho. So that's what I do. So hopefully that answers your question there. I just plan my GPS, divide it, divide the hours it takes to get there by 10. That pretty well tells me how many days it's going to take me to get there and it'll give me my ETA on my GPS when I'm going to be there. We 
have made it. Well, they say it's Tabor, but it's actually Purple Springs. Lamb Weston. Haven't been here in a long time. Yeah, it's been a while. I see a trailer over there that very well could be mine. That could be mine there. I wonder, I can, it's been a while since I've been here, so I wonder if there's security. Yeah, now I remember. I remember, oh, they got a scale here. I wonder if they'll let us eat, no, they don't let us use the scale here, I forgot. Yes, it's empty. Hey, you're picking up a uh, trailer? Yeah. What's your name? Ray. R-A-Y. Perfect. Okay. You Thank you. Yeah, there's not much to do here for the security. I didn't even bother to ask if the trailer was cleaned or washed or nothing. I think he's just kind of keeping an eye what's coming and going, but I bet you that's my trailer right there. That's what they do here. They load you and then they put all the trailers along the side here. Actually, we might have a few trailers there. I don't know what my trailer is yet. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna just quickly take a peek and see if my thing will tell me what my trailer See if it'll tell me I don't see anything here telling me what trailer I'm picking up. I guess it kind of helps to know what trailer it is. Oh, let's get in. Because if it's, I, I would just, wouldn't mind knowing. Let me put these on here. <laughs> I just wouldn't mind knowing what I'm picking up. Oh, come on. All right, here we go. 169 713 169. So it's definitely not that one. We got a whole bunch of trailers here. 713 169. That's not it there. That's 177. There's 169 right there. 713 169. Set up minus 10. Fuel is at three quarters, so we got lots of fuel. Works for me. And the paperwork should be in the dock holder, I think. I can't remember, it's been a while since I've been here. I can't remember how they do things here. And I think I put my empty here. There we go, another incident here where this plug is not making a connection. My four ways are on, but the light's not flashing. See, I'm gonna show you how to fix that right now. Whenever you go to Walmart or any of the stores, always keep your little bread tags. Keep these little things. Because right now I'm not making a connection. It's not flashing. Just like that. And look at that. All it takes is that little bit. You put the bread tag right in there. It's working now. And now my four ways are working. I don't know what it is. I get that problem a lot on these trailers where it's not making a proper connection all right we're good now we just gotta verify 
At Roanoke, Texas, that's mine! I like to make sure that the doors are properly closed because sometimes these guys that load the trailers, they don't latch them properly. I want to make sure those airbags fill up. Now, I don't think everybody does this, but I think it's really important that you do. So if you're a new driver, I really recommend you do this because they have a security guard here, but look at this open area here. Anybody can make their way over here. Anybody can tamper with these trailers. And there has been stories, true stories, about trucks that have made their way over to the US and people have found a way to stash drugs under their trailers. Because anybody could do that here, you need to really thoroughly check your trailer because you're responsible for it. And if you go across the border and you have drugs on your trailer, you're gonna get arrested. And it's happened before. There was a bison driver that had that happen. Well, I don't know if he was involved with it or not, but he still got arrested. So we need to look cross members, anywhere where they can stuff anything, like in little spots like this, right in there. Yeah, you might have to take an extra five, seven to 10 minutes to look, but you, you, you better do that because you're covering your own self. And people can stash little packages here and they bungee strap stuff right in here. Where it's easy, accessible, for the guy waiting on the other side of the border, which I would assume he would probably think you're stopping in Shelby, but that's why I don't stop in Shelby anymore. Spots like here and here. Cover yourself, man. Like right in here, it's a golden spot. Right in here. You can get a lot in here, look at that. Get my whole arm in there. This trailer looks good. Every time you cross the border. Guaranteed. To know that you're gonna feel good going across. I got 28 hours, 28 and a half hours. I'm gonna get four hours of driving in today because I don't drive past midnight. So that's gonna leave me with 24 hours left. I do about 10 hours a day, plus and a half, so you, uh, it's two and a half days almost, so that's gonna take me up to Tuesday on the 30th around uh, 12 noon, as I'm estimating when I'm gonna be there. So, four hours today, 10 the next day, <clears throat> 10 the following. So roughly a safe estimate is 12 noon on, the, on Tuesday the 30th of March is when I'll be delivering this load. Yeah, I gave myself a little bit more time because it's like 10 hours a day, so that gives me two extra hours. So, the reason why I'm planning noon is because that is an appointment I know I can make. Chances are I'll be there earlier, and the customer would rather have you early than late. So that's how I kind of do things there. So hopefully that helps. And I haven't been here in a while, so I'm guessing the security guard has to check out my paperwork before I can leave. And my weight seem to be pretty good. They're not bad. My gauge is under 60, which is good. And I'm pulling this really easy. So let's see what he wants me to do here. I don't really think I need to find a scale. I'll just go to the government scale.
Good morning. Yeah, I made it to Moore, Montana last night like I thought I would. I was hoping to get here. I got here a little bit later than I wanted to, but you know, that can't, couldn't really be helped considering my delay yesterday. So I made it to Eddie's Corner here. I really like this truck stop. They're very friendly in here. Um, and I think the fueling station is closed. Not the, not the diesel, but the main store. I think that's closed at night. But they leave the bathrooms in the back open for the drivers. And they're nice, they're clean. Um, yeah, and the people here are super friendly. And one of these days I'm gonna have something in their restaurant, but I never bring American money with me because I do that deliberately so I don't spend a whole lot because I usually supply my truck with everything I need. <coughs> like, uh, kind of like what I'm having for breakfast here. Carrots. <laughs> Good fiber. Yeah, and they're really tasty. They're organic sweet carrots. Well, they're not sweet carrots, but they're nice. Yeah, so, uh, we did good for time and today we are going to, I don't know how, I haven't figured out yet how far I'm going to go today, but I know I'm going to try to get at least 11 hours of driving in today if I can. If I can make up, make my way to a truck stop or a rest area, that's what I will do. That's normally what I do. So we have up to this point 24 hours and 43 minutes to go. I hope to eat up that 43 minutes today so I will be on schedule. And uh, that is the plan. But yeah, what a beautiful day it is out here today. They are expecting some really nasty winds. It is a bit windy out here already today. But some of the dark clouds are rolling in over there and I think they're expecting a little bit of snow today. But we won't be here to see it. countryside here along the 12. Montana's got some beautiful landscape. They really, it really does. And the trees don't even have leaves on them yet. And it looks really nice when you have the leaves on the trees. Uh, some of the beautiful sculptures, is what I call them. Sculpted mountainsides, cliffs. Beautiful. And you know one thing that I do too when I drive through these areas, like right there is an old farm and I'm guessing the newer house is probably built a little further up. I like looking at stuff like that. The old barns. Uh, like if I see an old barn or an old house in the middle of a field somewhere, I want to explore it. <laughs> 
just something to look at. It's history. I love history. I would love to look inside of an old house, an old barn, see if I could find something that could give me an idea how far it was dated back. You just never know what you might find. An old can, uh, maybe a newspaper, something, or maybe a some kind of a feed bag that has a brand on it, maybe even a date, something you can trace back, it'd be nice. Hi everyone, I am Ray Gaucher and welcome to this edition of Bible Break. The title of this message, Pray Without Ceasing. Pray Without Ceasing. And the reason why I wanted to do this message is because prayer is so very, very important. It's so very, very powerful. And it's something we should be doing daily. And there are times where I struggle with it myself. And it's not that I don't want to pray. Sometimes I just don't feel up to it. Or I just think the list of the prayer list I have is so long and it turns into a repetitious thing. And it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, prayer is supposed to be a way of um, communicating, communicating with God, um, sharing our thoughts with Him, uh, building an intimate relationship with Him. So why don't we quickly say a prayer and then we'll start. Dear Lord, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to spend this time together. Lord, we want to talk about prayer. I ask that your Holy Spirit would speak through me, that we may be able to reveal a new and more precious way to spend this time with you in prayer. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen. <clears throat> amen. Now, what is usually the first thing that is an issue when we pray? Well, sometimes we either have too much to pray for or we don't have enough to pray for and we don't know how to pray. Generally, what do we pray for? How do we pray for? Are we praying the right way? Well, remember that the Bible says here in Romans 8, 26 that the Holy Spirit will help us pray. Now think about that. The Holy Spirit will help us pray. It says here, Romans 8, 26, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for, as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Isn't that beautiful? So the Holy Spirit will help us pray. Think about that. If you don't know what to, if, if, if you, if you want to pray, and you know you should be praying, and maybe you just don't know how to pray. Um, some, I, I have talked to people, and they simply have said, I don't even know how to pray. I know how to ask for things, but I don't know how to pray. <coughs> well, why don't you turn that, converse, that prayer into a conversation? Something like this. Oh, dear Lord, it's been a beautiful day today. The sun has been shining, and you got me to a safe location. And I'm just very, very grateful. And thank you for everything you provided for me today. And would you please have your eyes on my kids today and just protect them? That's a prayer. It doesn't have to be something that's intense. And, but the thing is, we're supposed to pray like that all day long. That means have a conversation with our Lord all day long. It doesn't have to be every minute of the day, but you guys know what I mean. It's like a relationship we have with our spouse, if you're married. You're going to want to, well, especially on, let's just say it's weekend. You see each other in the morning. You talk, you see each other in the afternoon, you talk, maybe each one of you, maybe you've got, uh, one of you's got the lawn to do, one of you's got some laundry to do, and you meet up with each other and you say a little bit more, but you're constantly interacting all day long. <clears throat> Imagine spending that weekend together, not saying a word to each other. How cold would that be? How lonely would that be? Just walking by each other, not saying nothing. How long would that marriage last? Well, we're supposed to have an intimate relationship with our Lord. Shouldn't we be interacting all the time? There are times when I will be just going throughout my day and I'll be like, Lord, that is an amazing, look at that beautiful bird. Or look at that view out there. Oh, I'm so grateful to be out here. I'm so grateful that I'm not in a hospital room somewhere. That's a prayer. We're interacting with him. He wants that relationship with us. He wants that communion with us. 
First Chronicles 16:11 says, "Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face continually." continually he's instructing us to seek him continually to to spend that time with him all the time remember when Yeshua was in the garden and he prayed to his father three times that he said it was regarding his crucifixion regarding what he was gonna have to go through he prayed three times here's Yeshua the Son of God God in the flesh but yet he still, that's the way he communicated with his father. He prayed to him. He talked to him. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and it sh ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. How can we ever receive the wonderful gifts from our God, from our Lord? If we don't ask. Well, that's too big of a thing and too small of a thing, and I don't really think you'll give it to me. Do, would it really hurt to ask? I mean, either the answer is going to be yes, no, or maybe, or wait. Um, Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray that ye not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. This is something we need to equip ourselves with every single day. We are, as Christians, we are constantly under attack. We are constantly being tempted to do things we shouldn't be doing. The thoughts are running through our heads. Have you ever sat in prayer and you're just praying away and all of a sudden a thought comes into your head and you're like, where'd that come from? That's terrible. Well, the enemy is constantly throwing fiery darts at us, and we need to, as it says here in Matthew 26, pray, watch and pray that ye not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. This is something that, this is the same thing that Yeshua <clears throat> in Matthew 26 told the apostles after he was praying in the garden. He went back and told them. He says, pray. Watch, uh, watch and pray that you not enter into temptation. Your spirit is willing, your spirit wants to do the right thing, but the flesh is so ridiculously weak. How often do we fall into a tempting situation or something we shouldn't have done because our flesh is so weak? Luke 18, 1 says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always to pray and not to faint. We are always to pray. We are always to pray. When you get up in the morning, pray. When you're on your way to work, pray. We need to pray with our hearts. We need to pray with our hearts. If we pray and we don't want to, it's not even, is it really worth even doing? If we're like, I'm going to pray now, dear Lord. That's not what he wants. Is that really a conversation? Think of someone talking to you like that. You want to go and hang out with your friend, and he's like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> would not be good. I think that would be a really upset setting. Ephesians 6.18, we're all familiar with this one. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Praying always. Praying always. Why do we need to pray always to protect ourselves? What should we pray for always? For strength, protection, wisdom, I have a dear friend, his name is Darwin. I don't think he'll mind me mentioning his name. He tells me that he's the truck driver, he works in the city. Whenever he goes into situations where he gets these opportunities <coughs> to do his deliveries, sometimes he doesn't know how he's going to get into them. And he just says, Lord, <laughs> Yahweh, I just trust that you're going to get me in these spots and you're going to teach me how to get into these spots. And, and he totally relies on the Lord every single minute of his day. And that's what we need to do too. Psalm 91.15 says, He shall call upon me and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. What does this tell us? He shall call upon me. We shall pray to him. And the Lord says, I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. He's promising that he'll be there for us when we call upon him. See, by us not praying, we are really uh, 
depriving ourselves of his presence. We're depriving ourselves of what he can do for us. Isaiah 58 9. Then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shalt say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. More or less, again, he shall cry, he shall request, he shall cry out to me, and I shall be there for him. Isaiah 65, 24, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. Before I will call. You see, the Lord always kn already knows what you're going to pray for before you ask him. Isn't that amazing? It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer, and while they are speaking, I will hear. We have a God that hears our prayer. He takes the time to hear us. Well, how can he possibly hear everyone's prayer? He's omnipresent, omnipotent. He is amazing. He can hear all of our prayers. So he knows what we're going to pray for before we pray it. And he hears us and he sees what we're praying for. Again, I'll read this. And it should come to pass that before they call, I will answer. Before they call, I will answer. He answers before, sometimes before we even pray for it. And while they're yet speaking, I will hear. John 15, 7, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. This is beautiful. This is an act of obedience. When we are obedient to God, our prayers are even more powerful. They're even more powerful when we're walking with the Lord, when we're walking in obedience. I want to read that again. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and I shall, and it, or shall, sorry, and it shall be done unto you. We also have to believe and trust the Lord that uh, what we're praying for, He will hear or possibly answer. And sometimes what we pray for may not be the best for us. He knows what's best for us. Mark 11, 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe it, that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. If you're literally praying for something that you know that's going to bring, the, bring God glory, that's going to be something realistic. Like, for example... If I was to pray for, Lord, I pray that you would help me to be a better righteous person, someone with wisdom, someone with a kind and gentle heart, even someone who doesn't eat as much. Why wouldn't he answer that prayer? But if you're like, oh Lord, I really would love to have that Cadillac, or I'd love to do this, and I want to marry that person there, but that God may have another person planned for that person. I mean, we've got to be realistic too in our prayers. James 5.16, confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. If you practice righteousness, your prayers are very, very powerful. 1 John 3.22, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Isn't that what it all comes down to? I'll read it again. 1 John 3.22 And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Your prayers are so powerful when we walk in obedience. The final verse, Matthew 6, 7 says, But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Stay away from repetitious prayer, because that is something the Lord does not like. He likes a prayer from the heart. Um, I like to start my morning with a good morning prayer and a thank you prayer for getting through the night. And I like to follow that morning prayer up with the Our Father. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts, or our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass or have debted against us. And lead us not into hard testing or temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. And that covers a lot. That just covers so much that our Father. And let me cl close with this. Our Lord wants such... Uh, he wants a very special relationship with every one of us. He wants that intimate relationship with us. And He wants to commune with us every day. He wants to speak with us every day. The next time you take a walk, and just say, Lord... I just wanted to spend time with you and tell you how my day went. Even though he knows how your day went, he just wants that relationship. That's what he's all about. You see, us as human beings yearn for relationships with people. This is why we get married. This is why we have friendships. But God made us in his image. This is what he wants with us. This is what he wants too. He wants to have that relationship with you, with me. So the next time you pray, don't think of it as a chore. A chore. Think of it as a greeting, a way to spend time with God in a beautiful way. I hope that helps. And uh, until next time, God bless you all. In the name of Yeshua. Bye for now. this incredible view of Billings from up here. You can kind of see it a little bit down there. It's quite amazing, especially at nighttime. I'm really pressed for time, so uh, perhaps on the way back I'll have that opportunity. But yeah, it's really a sight to see. First time, as I said before, I drove through here and you've seen all the lights down there. You're like, wow, is that ever amazing? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm hoping though when we drop down the, on the bottom of this hill here, we can do away with all this wind because the wind has been pushing me around really bad. It's been beating up this truck good. <laughs> behind said they're expecting up to 70 plus mile an hour wind gusts tonight through here. 
Well, actually, they're supposed to be in effect now, but I am not noticing them. I'm guessing it's behind us because it was really windy behind me, but it's not so bad right now. So I'm guessing this is an, a, an approaching storm that's coming. And some of the reader boards also said that it's not rec recommended for high profile vehicles to drive from Wheatland to Cheyenne or Cheyenne or Cheyenne, wherever you say that. But I don't know any other route to go. And the winds don't seem to be bad. I checked the weather app earlier. It seemed to be okay. Uh, the detours, which is like literally an hour out of the way both ways, uh, the winds are no different there on the weather app. So I don't know what difference it will really make. I think possibly they have these warnings up now because they're expecting these winds to, to hit pretty quick. And as long as I can just keep going south in this direction, it's supposed to be coming from the west. So it's supposed to be like slamming up against the passenger side of your truck. But I'm heavy, so I don't, I mean, I'm not maxed out, but I'm close. So I might be okay. So we'll see what happens. But I don't really know any other route to go. These reader boards weren't giving us an option. We're telling us where you can detour, so I guess we'll see what happens. My, uh, my situation's in the hands of the Lord now. <laughs> Good morning to you. It is a beautiful day out here in Johnstown, Colorado. That's where I ended up last night. I was trying to try to make it to the rest area, but I missed it. I drove right by it. Couldn't see it because one of the construction signs was hiding the blue sign and all I seen was this flash of blue go by and I'm like, oops, I just missed my stop. So we ended up at the Johnson's Corner, the Petro over here in Johnstown, which can be a real mess if you show up here on a rainy day or a snowy day, the back parking lot is a mud bath. It's like driving on the moon. But a majority of the parking lot is all paved, but it was very hard to get a parking spot in here. And it's very, very, and there's an, the nice gentleman there, Western Transport, he drives. I just had an opportunity to talk to him. Well, I'm just getting ready for my day and I ran into another YouTuber. His name is? Braden. Where are you from, Braden? Wyoming, past Wyoming. Oh, you're from Wyoming, where, the, where you don't have to put a mask on. Yeah. I went over to the truck stop over there and you didn't have to put a mask on. It was weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, they just left the van. Oh, yeah. So are you here? You uh, Are you solo driver? Solo, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Right on. So where are you heading? Brighton, Colorado. Brighton going to Brighton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are the two buttons I was telling you about. Awesome. Yeah, my daughter makes those. And people pin them on their dash, their hats, whatever. Heck, yeah. Yeah. It, no dude. problem. Well, God bless you. It was real pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you too. That's kind of nice meeting up with YouTubers. You just never know when you're going to run into them. And uh, yeah, it was really nice to meet up with them. It really makes my day. All right. So yeah, we ended up at the Petro last night. We made ourselves a spot in the back here and uh, we're ready to go. And as you can see, it's a beautiful day. Uh, there's no wind in the air, there is no rain, there is no snow, it's a great day. <laughs> the storm has passed, but I wouldn't want to be heading in the direction going north, northwest, because that's where a lot of those wind storms are probably still in effect. So, well, we're just gonna do a little bit of our uh, Bible reading with our new translation. I left my CJB at home because it's so big and bulky and it's so hard to put it anywhere. But my new Bible, which is my King James Thompson chain reference Bible, it's nice. It is the perfect size. It is a little bit of a learning curve to read because it is translated from 1611 to a King James English version. So it can be on a little difficult side. But uh, it is still nice because you get all the meat and potatoes. So we'll be on our way and uh, rowing as soon as I uh, do my pre-trip and read a little bit of the word.
right here. We're still on the 287. We're going to be turning soon. Um, or maybe this still is the 287 we're turning on to. But um, yeah, I think it'll continue on. There's a Loves over here. It's good to know that's there. But you know what? The drive's been good. It's just open field here, open farmland. It's very, very comforting. It's very relaxing. Lots of little towns to drive through. What is that there? Praise Community Church. <clears throat> yeah. Once you get into Texas, you'll see a lot more of those churches, probably much more busier. Yeah, they're not as oppressing there in the state of Texas. <coughs> so this is the town limit of, I don't know how you say this, is it Eads? It might be Eads or Aids, but I think it's Eads. It's gotta be it. Yeah, these little towns that you get a chance to drive through, they're really fun. Uh, the one that I went through there, uh, my goodness, I'm trying to remember what it was called. It was just a little one-dog town, and it looked like a ghost town. There wasn't a whole lot going on there. I don't even know if anybody lived there. Yeah, I guess we, I guess we stay on the 287 as long as going through this route. But I love looking at the old buildings and even the ones that are shut down. And, like I said, five fine opportunities and I have lots of time on my hands. I still don't know what my, when my appointment time is, so I can't really afford to stop. But it would be nice to be able to look at some of these places, even if I spend like 20 minutes. You can see a lot. Oh, there's the main drag there. Um, yeah, you can see a lot within 20 minutes just walking around. Eats! I think that's how you say it, home of the Eagles. Yeah, there you have it. Not as much to see in this little town, but still, if you live here, we had a chance to show it. We have made it into Armarillo. We're driving downtown as we speak. <laughs> oh, that's a nice old building there. Yep, we got another couple hours to go and I'm, I'm hoping to shoot for a little town called Childress. And uh, they got a pilot there. I'm gonna get some fuel there. And if there's any parking, I'll park it there for the night. And that means I'll have a three hour run in the morning for two and a half hours rather and um, yeah that'll be the end of my day went pretty quick just fighting off the winds and yeah what is it saying here I got something jingling around in the back sounds like plates or dishes or something when I went over some of those bumpy roads yeah, I just lodged a lot of stuff back in my cupboards. Yes, it's mailbag time. And this week's email comes all the way from Northern Ireland from Michael and Patricia Lavery. I hope I said that right. 
If it's Lavery, I apologize, but I think it's Lavery. And this email reads, Hi Ray, I just wanted to say how much my wife and I enjoy watching your videos. They give a fabulous insight into the trucking industry in North America, and we particularly enjoy your walks around the small towns you encounter during your trips. Yeah, I like that too. Places we would otherwise never see, as well as all the wonderful scenery as you pass from state to state. It's great that you display the road signs on the screen too. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. That takes a little bit of extra time, but you know what? I do have some YouTubers that actually track me on on, on uh, Google Earth and they kind of watch the routes I go. So having the, the highway signs really does help. So I'm glad you like that. We live in Ireland and we are delighted to see you wearing a Dublin, uh, I'm going to say this wrong, <laughs> Gaelic, Gaelic? Gaelic, oh, I'm going to say it wrong, wearing a Dublin Gaelic football jersey during your videos. Do you mind if I ask the story behind it? My good friend out in the, in your area, um, Niall, he sent it to me. He said, would you wear the jersey if I send it? And I said, absolutely. So it, it's actually mailed all the way from over there. I, my good friend Niall sent it to me. So that's the story behind that. And I do have some Irish on my dad's side of the family, so I'm proud to wear it. Um, it, uh, the email also says it also is very refreshing to see your faith in God. Your Bible break is a wonderful time to reflect during all our busy lives. <clears throat> I'm glad to hear that. Hoping to see many more of your great adventures. Take care and drive safely, Michael and Patricia. And there you have it. Michael, Patricia, thank you so much for your email. It was a pleasure interacting with you. And if you want to send me an email or a testimonial of the videos have helped you in any way or just wanted to say hi and you'd like to have it on mailbag, send it to truckerray7 at gmail.com. Just about in uh, a little town here called Kwana. I stopped and got my fuel in Chow Childress, I think it is. And uh, these are all new places for me. I'm not familiar with any of these places. Um, but I've decided I was gonna maybe stop at the Flying J out there in Childress, but I thought, no. I need to get a little more time so I have a less drive in the morning. So I decided I'm gonna go past this town and the next town is called Vernon and I'm gonna be stopping there and that will give me two hours and 50 minutes in the morning to drive. <coughs> and hopefully that'll get me a little bit closer, a little bit further away from the wind that's still coming because they're still expecting some winds. So the further I get, the better. And they got a loves up here, I notice. But I'm not going to be stopping there. I can't remember what the truck stop is called. But, um, yeah, it's in Vernon. So that's where I will be stopping. is the name of the truck stop I'm stopping at. That's what it is. Sepco. And there should be some parking. I would assume, at least I hope. See they're just parking on the other side. Well, there's probably a fair amount of parking in here, I'm guessing. We will see, see, see. I'm just glad to be done for the night. Oh, there's tons of parking here. Good, okay, that works for me. And that's the Fueling Island over there. Hmm. Yeah. We can actually just park right next to this guy if I want. Yeah, that'll work. That's a 
exactly what I'll do. I'll park it right next to him. That'll still give guys, the guy in the scale there, plenty of room. Plenty of room. Well, it's been a good day. I got 10 hours and 36 minutes in for driving, so that makes me happy. <sighs> Just glad it's over. I'm getting hungry. I mean, I'm having, I'm feeding myself well. I had a couple toasted, well, not, they weren't toasted this time, but I had a couple sandwiches, sardine sandwiches today for lunch. But whenever I eat something at lunchtime, I end up getting extremely hungry halfway through my day. I'm gonna get a little bit closer to this guy. 